Welcome. This is the one year Bible reading for February 8th, and we are starting today in Exodus at the beginning of chapter 28, where the Lord is continuing to speak to Moses. Call for your brother Aaron and his sons Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Set them apart from the rest of the people of Israel so that they may minister to me and be my priests. Make sacred garments for Aaron that are glorious and beautiful. Instruct all the skilled craftsmen whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Have them make garments for Aaron that will distinguish him as a priest set apart for my service. These are the garments they are to make, a chest piece, an ephod, a robe, a patterned tur tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these sacred garments for your brother Aaron and his sons to wear when they serve me as priests. So give them fine linen cloth, gold thread, and blue, purple, and scarlet thread. The craftsman must make the ephod of finely woven linen and skillfully embroider it with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It will consist of two pieces, front and back, joined at the shoulders with the two shoulder pieces. The decorative sash will be made of the same materials, finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the tribes of Israel. Six names will be on each stone, arranged in order of the births of the original sons of Israel. Engrave these names on the two stones in the same way and a jeweler engraves a seal. Then mount the stones in settings of gold filigree. Fasten the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as a reminder that Aaron represents the people of Israel. Aaron will carry these names on his shoulders as a constant reminder where, whenever he goes before the Lord. Make the settings of gold filigree, then braid two cords of pure gold and attach them to the filigree settings on the shoulders of the ephod. Then, with great skill and care, make a chest piece to be worn for seeking a decision from God. Make it to match the ephod using finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Make the chest piece from a single piece of cloth folded to form a pouch nine inches square. Mount four rows of gemstones on it. The first row will contain a red carnelian, a pale green peridot, and an emerald. The second row will contain a turquoise, a blue lapis azuli, and a white moonstone. The third row will contain an orange jacinth, an agate, and a purple amethyst. The fourth row will contain blue-green beryl, an onyx, and a green jasper. All these stones will be set in gold filigree. Each stone will re represent one of the twelve sons of Israel, and the name of that tribe will be engraved on it like a seal. To attach the chest piece to the ephod, make braided cords of pure gold thread. Then make two gold rings and attach them to the top corners of the chest piece. Tie the two gold cords to the two rings on the chest piece. Tie the other ends of the cords to the gold settings on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. Then make two more gold rings and attach them to the inside edges of the chest piece next to the ephod. And make two more gold rings and attach them to the front of the ephod below the shoulder pieces just above the knot where the decorative sash is fastened to the ephod. Then attach the bottom rings of the chest piece to the rings on the ephod with blue cords. This will hold the chest piece securely to the ephod above the decorative sash. In this way, Aaron will carry the names of the tribes of Israel on the sacred chest piece over his heart when he goes into the holy place. This will be a continual reminder that he represents the people when he comes before the Lord. Insert the Ur Urim and uh, Thummim into the sacred chest piece so that they will be carried over Aaron's heart when he goes into the Lord's presence. In this way, Aaron will always carry over his heart the objects used to determine the Lord's will for his people whenever he goes in before the Lord. Make the robe that is worn with the ephod from a single piece of blue cloth with an opening for Aaron's head in the middle of it. Reinforce the opening with a woven collar so that it will not tear. Make pomegranates out of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and attach them to the hem of the robe with gold bells between them. 
The gold bells and pomegranates are to alternate all around the hem. The hem, excuse me. Aaron will wear this robe whenever he ministers before the Lord, and the bells will tinkle as he goes in and out of the Lord's presence in the holy place. If he wears it, he will not die. Next, make a medallion of pure gold and engrave it like a seal with these words, Holy to the Lord. Attach the medallion with a blue cord to the front of Aaron's turban where it must remain. Aaron must wear it on his forehead so that he may take on himself any guilt of the people of Israel when they consecrate their sacred offerings. He must always wear it on his forehead so that the Lord will accept the people. Weave Aaron's patterned tunic from fine linen cloth. Fashion the turban from this linen as well. Also, make a sash and decorate it with colorful embroidery. For Aaron's sons, make tunics, sashes, and special head coverings that are glorious and beautiful. Clothe your brother Aaron and his sons with these garments, and then anoint and ordain them. Consecrate them so that they can serve as my priests. Also make linen undergarments for them to be worn next to their bodies, reaching from their hips to their thighs. These must be worn whenever Aaron and his sons enter the tabernacle or approach the altar in the holy place to perform their priestly duties. Then they will not incur guilt and die. This is a permanent law for Aaron and all his descendants after him. Matthew, beginning in 30, verse 31 of chapter 25, and Jesus is continuing to teach about the last days. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover begins in two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. At that same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, plotting how to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. 
I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Thank you, Lord, for preserving that for us. And uh, I did learn that I referred to it the other day, just recently, that the Passover lamb is anointed on the head with oil two days prior to its sacrifice. And so in this way, Jesus is identified once again as the Lamb of God. Psalm 31, beginning in chapter 9 today. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard the many rumors about me, and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, You are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servants. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in the grave. Silence their lying lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. Proverbs eight, twelve, and 13. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. All who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption, and perverse speech. And to end today, we are with Selwyn Hughes again in Psalm 130. And I love this word today, especially coming on the heels of the parable of the ten bridesmaids that we heard yesterday. This called Waiting for the Dawn, based on verse 6. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. An old commentary on the Psalms written by a Welshman by the name of Dr. Sin Dylan Jones describes this psalm as being one of confident anticipation. Eugene Peterson believes the key words are wait and hope. These words tie in with the image of a watchman who sits through the night knowing full well that the dawn will come. A good watchman will stay awake and be alert to danger. Only at daybreak, when his task is over, can he go to his rest. He waits and watches and hopes. But his hope is not an elusive one. It is based on reality, the sure and certain dawn. In describing himself as a watchman, the psalmist is saying, I believe, that he is as sure of God as he is of the dawn. His hope, and ours also, is founded on that same conviction, the assurance that God is at work in his world and will bring his purposes to pass no matter how dark things appear. Waiting and hoping demonstrate a willingness to let God have his way. It is the very antithesis of making plans and then telling God to put them into effect. That is not hoping in God, but bullying God. Some see waiting as nothing more than resignation, then say, I'm resigned to the will and purposes of God. Resigned? The will of God is not something we should be resigned to. It is something we should rejoice in. And why? Because his will is always our highest good. Father, give us the condition of soul that waits for your purposes to come to pass with the same certainty and confident hope in with which a watchman waits for the dawn. In your word, we put our hope. Amen. Hope you have a hope-filled day today, and not an elusive hope, but a certain hope based on the certain coming again of our Lord Jesus. Love you all. Have a wonderful day.